Today I've got a pretty interesting problem involving a recursive sequence. But before we look at the problem, let's look at the most famous recursive sequence, and that's the sequence of the Fibonacci numbers. So let's recall how to define them. We'll take the zeroth Fibonacci number to be zero, and the first Fibonacci number to be one, and then after that we'll define f sub n to be f sub n minus one plus f sub n minus two. So it's the sum of the previous two terms. And so there's lots of really interesting tweaks that can be done to the Fibonacci numbers to come up with other similar sequences that have nice properties. But what we'd like to do today is take a zero to be one and then define the recursion with a minus sign instead of a plus sign. So let's notice that this is the same two-step recursion but we're subtracting them instead of adding them. Here the order is a bit different but because addition is commutative it doesn't matter. So in particular, we've got a n is a n minus 2 minus a n minus 1. And then our goal is to determine which values of a 1 will make this sequence always positive. So we fixed a 0 at 1, and this is really a question about a 1. Okay, so let's maybe do a couple of examples first to see if either of these work or if they seem to work, and then we'll go through what we need to do to really answer this problem. Okay, so let's start with a1 equals 1 half. So let's see, a2 will be equal to a0 minus a1 by our recursion, but since a0 is 1, we have 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 half. Okay, and then a3 will be a1 minus a2, but that's a half minus a half, which is zero. But immediately we have something that is not positive, which means this choice for a1 does not work. It does not produce a sequence that only has positive terms. So maybe the problem is that a1 is too big. So let's go to a1 equals a quarter to see if that works. So let's see, in this case we'll have a2 is again a0 minus a1, so that's 1 minus a quarter, that will be 3 quarters. And now let's do a3, that'll be a1 minus a2. So that'll end up being 1 quarter minus 3 quarters, that's negative 1 half. But again, this doesn't work either, this is negative. So maybe the problem is not that one half was too big, but maybe it's that one half was too small. So let's look at the choice when a1 equals three quarters. What do we get out of that? So we'll get a2, so that's gonna be a0 minus a1 again. So that'll be one minus three quarters, so that will be one quarter. But if we're in one quarter land, then we're gonna have this whole thing happen again. But let's just check to make sure. So let's look at a3. That'll end up being a1 minus a2. So that's three quarters minus one quarter. That's a half, so that's good. We're still positive. And now let's look at a4, which is a2 minus a3. Oh, but that's a quarter minus a half. That's negative one quarter. So this doesn't work either. So we tried three choices for A1 and none of them worked. They all pretty quickly got to a negative value in our sequence or at least zero in our sequence. So now let's do a more proper exploration of this to see if really we can find any values of A1 that keep us always positive. Okay, so before we get started with our proper exploration, I've made a short list of the first several Fibonacci numbers. Just kind of looking ahead, these will be helpful to have on the board. So we've got 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, so on and so forth. So each term is the sum of the previous two terms. Okay, so now let's set a1 equal to something arbitrary. I'll call it r. I guess we could leave it as a sub 1, but I think it's easier to have something that's not subscripted. Okay, so if a1 is equal to r, then a2, well let's recall that should be a0 minus a1, so that will be 1 minus r. So we have a2 is 1 minus r. Then what will a3 be? 
So A3 will be A1 minus A2. So it's the difference of the previous two. So we take A1 minus A2, and you'll see that we'll get 2R minus 1. Okay, then A4, what's that? So that's A2 minus A3. So A2 minus A3, that'll end up being what? Negative 3R plus 2. And now that I'm looking at this, maybe it's a little bit better to rewrite this as minus R plus 1, just to like work towards a pattern. Okay, let's do a couple more to see if we can see a pattern emerge. So A5 will be A3 minus A4, so that will be 5R minus 3. And now I think we can see a pattern emerge, especially with this on the board. We have a coefficient of 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3, 5. Well, that's an alternating part of the Fibonacci numbers. Now, let's see, A6, so that will be A4 minus A5, so that's going to be negative 8R plus 5. Oh, there's the next Fibonacci number. And we can see 5 is a Fibonacci number also. It's the one right before 8. Oh, and 3 is the one right before 5, and so on and so forth. So A7 will be A5 minus A6, so that ends up being 13R and then minus 8. And now we can see these Fibonacci numbers showing up even more. So 13 and 8 are both Fibonacci numbers. 8 and 5 are. 5 and 3 are. And furthermore, they're consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So now let's take our sequence up there and write it in terms of our subscripted notation so that we can really see what's going on with the placement. So this f, so this zero is f sub zero. This one is f sub one. We have f sub two is the other one. F sub three is two. F sub four, f sub five, f sub six, f sub seven. So f sub seven is 13. Then f sub eight will be 21 and so on and so forth. So a sub seven depends on f sub seven and f sub six. A sub six has f sub six and f sub five and you can see that pattern goes back and it will also go forward. Let's guess a closed form for a sub n. So it looks like it should be f sub n times r and then f sub n minus one. But exactly what sign is attached to this? Well, notice that here we get a plus sign when we have an odd index and a minus sign when we have an odd index. And those swap here. Here we have a leading minus sign with an even index and a plus sign with an odd index. So I think maybe our best bet here is to write this as minus 1 to the n plus 1 and then put a minus sign there. And that does it. So we have a sub n. So if n is odd, this will be negative 1 to an even power, and then we'll have fn r minus fn minus 1. Whereas if n is even, this will be minus 1 to an odd power, and we'll pick up a minus sign. So this seems to be the case. Okay, so now let's just check that using induction. So let's look at a sub n plus 2, and notice that should be a sub n minus a sub n plus 1. But then by an induction hypothesis, which I'm not being super careful about, I've got several videos where I do induction very, very carefully, and I urge you to check those out and rewrite this very carefully if you're psyched. So let's see. A sub n, well, we're guessing that's of this form, so that'll be minus 1 to the n plus 1, f sub n times r minus f sub n minus 1, and then we'll subtract a n plus 1. So that'll be minus, minus 1 to the n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2, and then f sub n plus 1 times r minus f sub n. So we have something like that. And now from there, what I'd like to do, keeping in mind that my exponent on the negative one here is one more than my index, I'm gonna factor a minus one to the n plus two plus one or n plus three out of this whole thing. And then just keep in mind what that does to the sign of everything. So n plus three is two more than n plus one, so that means it has the same sign when in the exponent of negative one, because it's just off by negative one squared. So that means we'll have fn times r minus fn minus one. 
But then this will pick up a different sign because these are off by exactly one unit. So this is n plus three, this is n plus two. So if I factor a minus one to the n plus three out, that picks up a minus sign. But the minus sign it picks up cancels with this right here. So that'll leave me with plus fn plus one times r minus fn, great. And now I can combine these, so I can combine this fn times r and this fn plus one times r and this minus n plus one and this minus fn using our recursive definition of the Fibonacci numbers. And that leaves me with minus one to the n plus three times fn plus two times r minus fn plus one. But that's exactly what we needed to show in order to prove this closed form. And now let's notice that this works for any value of r. So now let's take that fact and use it to prove what we set out to do, which is which values of a1, which we set equal to r, will make this sequence always positive. Okay, recall we just derived the following closed formula for our sequence. And our goal is for this to be always positive. But notice we've got this minus one to the n plus one out front, which means the sign of this whole thing is gonna vary depending on the parity of n. That gives us motivation to look at these as two cases. So our first case will be what happens if n is odd. So that will give us one particular set of restrictions on R. So if N is odd, notice that means minus one to the N plus one is equal to minus one to an even power, which is one, which means having a n bigger than zero is equivalent to having F N times R minus F N minus one bigger than zero. Okay. But let's notice that's equivalent to having fn times r bigger than fn minus 1, which is in turn equivalent to having r bigger than fn over fn minus 1. So we have something like that. But now also, let's notice that if n is odd, we know the form of n. So n is of the form 2m plus 1, where m is just some integer. So let's put that into this situation. So that fuses the oddness inside of this inequality without really having to worry about it. So that gives us r must be bigger than f sub 2m plus 1 over f sub 2m. Okay, great. So I think that's a good one to put a box around. So now let's look at the next case. So this will be case number two, which is the case when n is even. But if n is even, then that means that minus one to the n plus one is equal to minus one because n plus one is odd. Okay, but that tells us that in order for a sub n to be bigger than zero, we need minus fn times r plus fn minus one bigger than zero. But that's gonna give us a slightly different inequality. That's gonna give us the inequality r is less than fn over fn minus one. Okay, but now let's use the standard form of an even number. So an even number is of the form two times m. So if we take that and plug it into our desired equality or inequality, I should say, we see that r has to be less than f sub two m over f sub two m minus one. So putting these two inequalities together, we see that we can pin r between ratios of Fibonacci numbers. So let's take that fact and then finish it off. So this is where we ended up. We had our closed form for a n in terms of Fibonacci numbers and our r, which was like our unknown a1 term over here, like the second seed, if you will. And we also showed that if we want all of these terms of our sequence to be positive, then we have the following interesting inequality. So we have R is pinned between these two ratios of Fibonacci numbers. 
where here we have F2M plus one over F2M, and here we have F2M over F2M minus one. But now we're gonna finish this thing off with just a well-known fact. And that well-known fact has to do with the limit of ratios of consecutive Fibonacci numbers. So as we let M tend towards infinity for both of these, we'll get the same number, which is phi, the golden ratio. So in other words, we'll get one plus the square root of five over two. But since each of these sides limit to the same number, which is this phi golden ratio, and r must satisfy this inequality for all values of m, that means that the only value of r that will make this work is the golden ratio. Okay, great. And I've done lots of problems on the channel before with Fibonacci numbers and also identities involving Fibonacci numbers. There should be one on the screen now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.